Hello and welcome to Dialogue. For more than five decades, the former Prime Minister of France, Jean-Pierre Raffarin, has been witness to China's tremendous development. As a prominent figure in Europe, Raffarin has long promoted understanding between China and the world, especially when difficulties emerge. To find out more about experience with China and his thoughts on the current challenges, I'm very glad to be joined by Jean-Pierre Raffarin. That's our topic. I'm Zhou Yue. Uh, bonjour, uh, Mr. Afran. Uh, I know that this year's Boal Forum, uh, two topics have been highlighted, and you being a frequenter to the forum, the two topics are a world in change and strengthen global governance. And the Chinese say, well, today's world is experiencing a tectonic change that has not happened ever in a century. So, what is your understanding on the changes in the world, and what kind of challenges does it pose to global governance? Yeah, it's a very, very good pleasure for me to have discussion with you. Uh, you know, for me, the Boa Forum is a very important meeting, and very glad to be uh, in this meeting. So, the change is very important right now with this uh, pandemic. We have understood that the world is changing. Before. So globalization was the main word. We have a new vision right now. The vision is not globalization, but planetization. We need to have a new vision of the world. And this new vision is, for me, the Paris Agreement and consequences of this Paris Agreement. Before, we were with the Washington Consensus. Now we are with the Paris consensus. We need to change the world to protect our house, common house, to protect our destiny, to protect the planet. So the planetization is the main world, the main change. Planetization is the way that we have to follow to be a new world of cooperation. And I think the new field of cooperation right now is the sustainable development, is the new vision of the world, is the planet target, is the planetization against globalization. So you stressed a global cooperation, but do you think after COVID, globalization and cooperation uh, on a global scale will be anything different than before COVID? Yes, the globalization is going back in this period. Multilateralism is going back. Why? Because the virus is very international, but, but each country wants to find only alone the solutions. So everybody is working in this own place we need to have cooperation, of course, against the pandemic, against the virus, but also to have a new vision. What is this vision? Is a more healthy world, more green world. Mm. It's a, a new vision of our world. I think it's the same vision in the Chinese strategy and the Europe strategy and American strategy, that's the strategy of the new world. We have to protect our planet. Globalization is not protected enough the planet. Planetization is an action, common action, to make humanity in the middle of our strategy. Humanity has to be protected. To protect humanity, we have to protect the planet. So this new world need cooperation. Of course, we need sovereignty, but we need also cooperation. We have to go ahead with our two legs. Mm. One is sovereignty, the other is cooperation. And what kind of cooperation? Cooperation for a better planetization. So a world with a planet and a planet for humanity. 
But I believe that you have also seen some fracture of relations between major countries. Uh, Mr. Afran, relations between China and the European Union have seen some difficulties recently uh, over issues such as human rights and investment. Are any suggestions for both sides? Yes, I agree with you. Uh, the situation is not so good. We have to improve it. How can we improve the situation? Firstly, is to respect our old civilization. We have a very old civilization in China and in France. Secondly, we need to understand what we need to have to make together. And I think the last agreement in the world is Paris Agreement. So we need to build consensus. It's difficult to have consensus in any fields, mm. very difficult. Between China and Europe, we have differences. We have differences in political matter. We have not the same political model, of course. That's not new. We need to have a, a, a good uh, respect of our model. Our model is democracy and is not the same model that uh, the strategy of China with the Communist Party. So we have a very uh, big difference, but we know that for many years. But we have also a field we, we need cooperation. It's the economic core fields. So in this field, we have to work together to improve a win-win strategy. We have signed a very important agreement with investments, between China and Europe, and we need to improve this agreement and to develop our investments, common investments. So that's a cooperation for economical strategy, but also for the market. But also, and thirdly, we have to uh, develop a common international strategy, a new multilateralism. The multilateralism has been found in 1945. 75 years. It's a very old strategy. And in this period, the world were not what it is now. Africa was not the same. Of course, Asia was not the same. So we have a lot changed since 1945. So we have to think a new world. And I think from my own point of view, that the main point is to promote the Paris consensus, the planetization, that's the strategy that we have to develop. When we know and when we read the speeches of President Xi Jinping, and when we read the speech of President Biden about the planet, the vision is not so different. So we can have consensus in this matter. Of course, we have difference. We have ideological difference. We have very, very lot of differences, but we need to promote our consensus. And I think that the planetization, the vision of the new planet for humanity is a good idea to promote a consensus. Mm. And uh, that's the reason why I think that we can go ahead above our differences and to have a vision, a common vision of the future of the world. But, but do so you think the we have human different issue differences were jeopardized Sino-European investment treaty that has been long time in the making. It's, it's of course a, a very important subject. We have not the same political model, of course. But I want to say that it's not new. Uh, we know that for a long time. So the question right now is how to face the new challenges. And for me, the main challenge is the climate change. And for these challenges, we have a lot of reason to work together. Mm. So I think with this question of, uh, of course, uh, uh, 
climate change, but also for growth and for a lot of uh, questions uh, uh, for innovation, for uh, um, economic uh, development, of course, but also scientific uh, uh, development, of course, also uh, digital strategy. So we need to have cooperation. And uh, that's the reason why we have to go ahead above our differences to propose for a public opinion common strategy to face new challenges. Let's talk about the European politics a little bit. Uh, France and Germany, uh, many believe are the pillars of the European Union and, and German Chancellor Angela Merkel, uh, she will retire and she is a successor. Uh, so how, how do you see the future of, of France's position within the EU? Firstly, I would like to say that for me, there is a very important new attitude about Europe when Europe is talking with China. Mr. Macron and Mrs. Merkel are talking together with Mr. Xi Jinping. It was the, the situation uh, for the last visit of President Xi Jinping in Paris. And I know that uh, in these days, they have discussion together, Mrs. Merkel, Mr. Macron, and Mr. Xi Jinping. I think it's very important for uh, having a very strong position in Europe to have both chairman, Mrs. Merkel and Mr. Merkel, to talk with Mr. Xi Jinping. And I think that uh, it's, a, it's a very important strategy between France and China and France and Germany to prepare the future. Now, Mrs. Merkel is chairman of Europe. Next year, Mr. Macron will be the chairman of Europe. Mm. And they work together to propose China to have a follow-up of uh, our agreement to have a vision uh, for long term and uh, to have the, uh, the strong idea that Germany and France will keep on running in that way to have cooperation with China. We have differences, but we need cooperation. But even and when I Germany has a new leader, you don't think that will change the momentum? I don't think that will change. And that's the reason why we are working so closely right now. And that's the reason why when we are discussing with China, France and Germany are talking together. Now, Mrs. Merkel is very strong. Tomorrow, we will see with the election, mm. maybe Mr. Macron will follow up what uh, they have decided both. Uh, earlier, you talk about the models here in China are different from uh, France and, and Europe in, in, in general. What do you say China's uh, diplomacy uh, is inspired and probably informed by its conviction that is rooted in Chinese culture? So that is uh, systematically different from Western approaches. Yes, you know, uh, China is a very old civilization and uh, it's not so easy to understand. Uh, I have uh, made my first trip in China 50 years ago. I have made maybe more than 100 travels in China mm. and I know only a very small part of China. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's very difficult. But your experience and, uh, is very I rare think, for Western uh, uh, politician. But, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very difficult to understand the uh, very uh, deep civilization. We need to have a lot of discussion, to, to have a lot of exchanges. And uh, in France, there is no so much people who are knowing well China. And uh, I think uh, everybody has a very theoretical idea 
of China, not a practical idea of China. So we need to explain what the Chinese thinking is. We can have uh, uh, different opinion. We can have right now different strategy. But if you look the civilization, if you look all the big trend, you will see that China will be always here and we have to work with China for a long time. Even we have discussion at this period, but uh, the, the time is bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that, uh, that uh, it's very important to, to understand. So we can, of course, have discussion, but we need to have respect and discussion. Mr. Chirac said always with me, when I was his prime minister, he said, no, we, we, we have to work with Chinese. Why? Because they are as clever as us mm -hmm. and they work more than us. And when a people is clever and these people are very working hard, they will be in the stage for a long time. Mm. And I think that my vision is a long-term vision. So I know that we can have differences. I know that we can, uh, uh, some point, we, are, uh, we disagree. But I would like to, to have a very long vision. And this vision is that uh, we need to have cooperation with China, respect of uh, our uh, uh, model, and also to have cooperation. But as you said, uh, there are a lot of smart Chinese who are in great numbers and they're becoming richer and more powerful and people in the West have doubts about China's path in becoming a strong power in the world. What do you have to say to them? I say that, um, you know, uh, I know that uh, China is a very powerful country and in this country there is a lot of powerful people. Of course, in your uh, country, you have success for emerging a middle class. So that's the reason why your market is so important. And uh, for all the world company, French company, when a French company wants to become a world company, it needs to go to China. Mm. You know, the Chinese market is a necessary market for the world company. So American market is also a necessary market, but we need to have both market and of course European market. So you are very uh, dynamic and your economy is very strong already. And I think that with this crisis, your economy will improve more and more and you will be stronger in the next future. So we need to have cooperation, of course. That's very clear. And if you have a long-term vision, we need to have discussion. And in my country, some people said, ah, Mr. Rafferman is becoming Chinese. <laughs> I'm not Chinese. I'm promoting the French interest. I want to, uh, my country will be stronger and stronger but I have a vision of the future mm. and there is no future without China. So we have to discuss, we have to understand. And there is a lot of interesting thing is a uh, culture, culture of uh, China and we need to have to, So we can be very strong in our interest, but we need to have cooperation. We can't success alone in this world. Mm. That's the reason why I think that it's stupid to fight always uh, against a country for ideological question, for uh, a strategic question. We need to have cooperation because we can't success alone. Mm. 
Mr. Refron, let's talk about another global problem, that is COVID. Um, and COVID, some people say that has reshaped the global geopolitics and international diplomacy. Some Western countries blame China for mishandling of the origin of the virus, and China says it is uh, groundless. What do you make of China's diplomacy in the time of COVID? I think that uh, we need to have international organization to have a very complete vision of the situation. I think that in this world, only international organization can make this work for everybody. So I think that the good way is to promote and to develop WHO. We have this organization and this organization must be supported and must be uh, promoted to be the international vision of the situation. So I am in favor of multilateralism. And I think it's the only way to peace. So we need to promote this organization. And uh, the, uh, the good vision and the good judgment about the different policy of each country has to be by the WHO. Mm. It's the international point of view has to be promoted. But some and, people uh, in the West say that, that the WHO has been biased and has been supporting China's position unapologetically. You know, uh, when you want that your partner is not the leader of the organization, you have to stay around the table. When America leaves the table, uh, they can't say after that, ah, China is around the table. Yes, but we need to be around the table. In uh, international cooperation, we need to be around the table. And France is around the table of WHO, and we need to have cooperation, and we support this organization. And we can have discussion, and in the WHO organization, we have a good discussion with everybody, even with China. And I have heard the French representative in this matter, and we support this organization. But you know, when uh, in the past, I hope it will be better in the future, but in the past, when America disagree, they leave this nation. Uh -huh. So if you are not around the table, you have no word to say okay. after that. Of course, we have to improve in that organization. We can discuss about the improvement of each organization, but we need international organization for international peace. And now President Biden seems to be uh, for multilateralism again. And Biden vows to coordinate with European allies to compete uh, with China. So in your opinion, how should uh, Europe adjust its approaches uh, towards China? It's a difficult question because we have a very old partnership with America and uh, we can't forget the past. But the future and our future is to have to promote a sovereign Europe. We need to have our own strategy. And we are not in favor of the external law of USA. You know, a big company, France, Total, or not, not as a big company, Peugeot, has to close their plants in Ireland because they can't go in USA if they are in Iran. You know, it's a very strong pressure mm -hmm. for our companies to be aligned with American strategy. So we, not, we disagree with this vision. We want to have a good partnership with America, also with China, with Africa, with our partners, 
but we need to have our own sovereignty and we need to have this question but it's not so easy a part of uh, europe is very often anxious about what uh, the russian strategy is and they always need the support of america and they are afraid of a risk of war with russia and they want to have the support of america so that's our question we need to have a strategic security policy in the east of europe we need security in east of europe and we need to discuss the security between russia and between europe I know that you've met many Chinese leaders before, and you know pretty well about China, how China is run. And you even asked a President Xi to autograph uh, his volume of the book, uh, The Governance of China, Xi Jinping. What is your take on his book and his concept of governance? You know, uh, so the Chinese president gave me his books and with uh, uh, with his autograph, his sign. it was a bow for love. Uh, you know, uh, in this uh, book, uh, I think uh, first of all, it's very important when you are in office to r read what you want to to do for people. Uh, a good, very good French president, Mr. Giscard d'Estaing, read a book when he was in charge to explain what is his strategy. And I think it's a good way of working. Uh, in this book, uh, there is a clear strategy of China. And it's important for everybody to understand the clear strategy. For example, a lot of people were thinking that uh, China will become just like West countries with the development of uh, its market. But with Xi Jinping in this book, it's clear that uh, the Chinese characteristic of socialism is the main point. And the main point is the leadership of the Communist Party. So it's clear to understand what the country wants to do. It's clear. And in that matter, we have a lot of vision about, for example, innovation. I think it's a, very important word in the, in the book about innovation. And uh, uh, there is always very strong words for use, to us use to be innovative and to go in uh, uh, university, innovation center, cluster and so on, mm. to, to develop innovation, to invent, to, to, to think the future. And I think that uh, the main point in this book is to choose the future, to choose innovation. No, uh, sometimes in Europe, a lot of people are thinking that uh, uh, an old country has a, an old vision. And I would like to explain that we can be a very old country, but you can also have a very new vision yeah. about the future. And uh, that's uh, what is uh, read in this book. Well, innovation for the future. Uh, that sounds a very uh, good summarization of the book. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rafran, for your insights. Thank you so much.